been seeing. And you're very welcome to the brand new season of Mustard TV, where we still see the fun and faith. And you know, kids, since it's a brand new season, we're going to give you a brand new name. And we're going to call you Mustardia. <laughs> and since it's a brand new season, I'm I'm wearing a brand new shirt, which is called the Invisible Shirt. Hey Bennett, we're gonna talk about friendship today. Not about invisible shirts? And invisible shirts. Woo! So kids, hang on to your seats, because we're gonna be right back after this break with our Addis Worst, Always Still Cute. And uh, where did the rest of me go? Uh-oh. Did you know that the Pacific Ocean is three times bigger than Asia, the biggest continent on Earth? It covers nearly one-third of the Earth's surface. It widens part in about 1,770 kilometers or 11,000 miles. That distance would take you halfway around the world. Time for another Bible Quiz! Bible Quiz! Why did Rebecca tell Jacob to leave his father's house? Letter A, to find a wife. Letter B, to get away from Isaac. Letter C, she heard that Esau was waiting to kill him. Letter D, to go to college. The correct answer is letter C, she heard that Esau was waiting to kill him. Guess who? Can you guess who our mystery character for the week is? Quick! He is the 11th son of Jacob. Bible character of the week is up next. Bible character of the week. Good morning, Mustardians! Welcome to a brand new season of Mustard TV. This is your good old segment, Bible Character of the Week. I am your Atom Marie with yet another mustard flavored story, this time from the Book of Kings. And our Bible Character of the Week for this morning is Josiah. And this is his story. When Josiah was eight years old, he became king. Josiah, by God's grace, was to rule for 31 years in Jerusalem. Remember him, Josiah, king of Jerusalem. Josiah did what was good in the sight of the Lord. He followed the teaching of his great-great-grandfather, King David. As a boy, he tried to stop his people from praying to false gods. But many people had forgotten about God and had even stopped taking care of the temple. It made Josiah sad to see the temple in need of repair. So one day, he sent one of his helpers to the temple and said, Go to the pastor Helkiah. Give him the money that people have brought to the temple. Let him give money to the workers who will repair the temple. So, Work on the temple soon began. While repairs were being made at the temple, one of the workers found a book. It was a special book. It is actually a part of the Bible that we now call Deuteronomy. Helkiah took the book to Josiah. I have found the book of the Lord, he said to the king of Jerusalem. And you know what King Josiah did? He sent Helkiah to one of God's teachers. Helkiah was to find out if God would punish him and his people. The teacher's answer was this, God will punish the wicked who forget him and do wrong, but he 
he will forgive the king, for the king is sorry that his people have not obeyed God. When Josiah heard this, he asked all the people in his city to go with him to the temple. The king and the people promised God that they would remember what the scripture had told them. Best of all, King Josiah and the people did their best to keep their promises. They broke down and burned the altars and statues of false gods throughout the land. When he was king, Josiah did the best he could, for God was his best friend. And because of what he did, God was pleased. And this, Mustardens, is the story of Josiah, king of Jerusalem and God's faithful and humble servant. See you again next week for another Bible character of the week. This is your Ate Marie. Stick around for more Mustard TV. Some practical tips in school life on School 101. Ta-da! Hey there, Mustardians! Welcome to School 101. Ate Jonah couldn't make it today, so I'll be substituting for her. My name is Ate Mai! Well, we are a handful of episodes away from our Christmas special. But before that, let's go on with our segment. Our topic for this week is about friendship. Having friends in school is definitely one of the best things about being a student. Wouldn't you agree? So here are three fun things that you could do with your friends in school. Actually effective to learn together. As long as your teacher has no objections to it, and for as long as you do not disrupt the learning process, sit with the people whom you learn well with in class and study with them. Memorize things together, learn through song, share stories about the lesson, do whatever it takes to help the learning process. The more fun you have, the better you'll remember the lessons you have studied. And since we're studying in teams, figure out how to share resources. And the second fun thing that you could do with your friends is share your notes. When I was young, I used to share my notes with my friends. And you know what? I discovered I missed some points during lecture. And by sharing my notes, I help my friends as well. So, share your notes! And the last fun thing that you could do with your friend is be a friend inside and outside of school. You already know what they do in school, but do you know what they do outside of school? Do you know where they live? How many siblings do they have? Do they love music? Do they play sports? Um, what do they do on weekends? Do they know you watch Mustard TV? Why don't you invite them at home and... Come on, let's watch Mustard TV. And then after, you invite your other siblings to watch Inside the Fishbowl. that simple. So there you have it! Those are the three fun things that you could do with your friends in school. First, learn together. Second, share notes. And third, be a friend inside and outside of school. Join us again next week for another episode of School 101. I'm Ate Mai. Stick around for more of Mustard TV. Did you know?
that. Did you know that 97% of all the water on Earth is salty? Only 3% is fresh water. Of that 3%, over 2% is frozen in ice, sheets, and glazers. And that means that less than 1% of that 3% fresh water is found in lakes, rivers, and underground. Time for another Bible Quiz! Bible Quiz! Who led a rebellion against the authority of Moses? and the ground swallowed them up. Letter A, Molech. Letter B, Ejar. Letter C, Aaron. Letter D, Korah. The correct answer is Korah. Guess who? Can you guess who our mystery character for the week is? He was given a beautiful coat Full of many colors by his father. Here's at the Roby in Art and Soul. Yay! Art and Soul! Hey, my stardust! This is Ate Roby and welcome, welcome to a brand new season here in Mustard TV. So glad to have you back here in Art and Soul. For today, we'll be praising God by creating little things using our hands. For today's theme, we have friendship and we will be making a friendship capsule. What's a friendship capsule? It is a container where we put our uh, little things, knickknacks to remind us of our friends. this, the things that we will need are empty container and things that remind us of our friends like mirror, keychain, and a clip. And also we'll need clay, a piece of clay, two popsicle sticks, sticky tape, a pair of scissors, and paper cutouts to design our container. Do you want me to repeat the materials? Empty container. Things that remind us of our friends like mirror, keychain, clip. And also we need clay, two pieces of popsicle stick, sticky tape, pair of scissors, and paper cutouts. Are you ready? Because I am ready and excited to start. First, we get the, the empty container. We'll put design. So let's remove first the cover. So I'll get one piece of paper cutout. Be sure to be careful in using the pair of scissors. It's up to you how to design your container. So I use gloves because this reminds me of my of my best friend and I use different colors because she likes different colors actually both of us like different colors okay we're almost done okay so I've already put design around the container okay. Um, I will already put inside the things that reminds me of my friend. Okay? But you know we always pray together because uh, our parents told us that, that praying is talking to God. So to remind me of that, I'll put a cross in the middle. For making the cross, we need the two popsicle sticks. This is a cross. This will remind me to always pray to God. Now, for this to stand, we'll put the clay in the middle. Inside the jar. And then, 
You see? Okay, the things are already inside with a cross. And for this, you know, I prepared a prayer for all of us. Would you like to pray with me? Okay, here's the prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we praise and thank you for a brand new season. We ask you to continue to bless us and guide us as we use our talents to make our family and friends happy and in turn to make ourselves and you, our God, happy as well. May the different friendships in our lives flourish for as long as we have you in the center of things. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope we always find time to pray to God because praying to God makes us happy. Not only us, but also God and other people. Praying not only for ourselves, but also for other people will make God happy. And that's it for today, Mustardians. See you again next week here on Art and Soul, where we praise our Creator by being creative. This is Ate Roby. Eagles don't fly, they soar. The Adventures of Billy Big Toes by best-selling author Bo Sanchez, his first children's book ever, and the latest release from Shepherd's Voice Publication. Eagles don't fly, they soar. The Adventures of Billy Big Toes. Grab your copy now. Available at all leading bookstores nationwide. Here's Kuya Pao in Pao's house. What's up, kids? I'm your Kuya Pao. You see that house behind me? That is my house. Pao's house. Want to come in? Come on! It's going to be really nice inside. What? Are you going to join me? Come on, I'm inviting you. Let's go! Take a look inside my house. Take a look inside Pao's house. Take a look inside my house and see God work in our house. Take a look inside Pao's house. Take a look inside my house. Take a look inside Pao's house and see God work in our house. See God work in our house. See God work in our, our house. Yeah, come on in. Welcome to my living room. Isn't it so cool? Well, it's just a normal living room. But since you are here with me, it makes it much more special. Do you know what I do here in my living room? Well, my family gets together here most of the time. We watch television, we play video games, and we just hang out and talk to each other, share stories, and enjoy one's company. This is also where I entertain my guests, friends, relatives, or schoolmates. Yep, this is where all the friendship happens. Ring, ring. Speaking of friendship, one thing I also do here in my living room is keep in touch with friends. 
and I use the telephone, telephone to do that. Excuse me, I'm just gonna answer the phone, okay? Wait a minute. Hey, hello, Bene. Sure, we're gonna play later. What time? Okay. Oh, wait. Are the three Athens gonna be there? How about Francine? Cool, everybody's coming. You know what? I'm gonna invite George and Purcell to join in too. Is that okay? All right. Okay, see you later. Take care. Bye. Thank God for telephone. It's easier to contact your friends, right? Right? Hmm. This makes me wonder. How does a telephone work? How does a telephone work? Do you want to know how? Do you want to know how? I think it's time to bring out the thinking cap. And now I've got my thinking cap on. I think it's time for the thinking rap. Yeah. Hey, hey, kids, what do you see? The thinking cap is now on me. And when I wear my thinking cap, you know what follows this thinking rap. Thinking rap. To the thinking rap. To the thinking rap. Now listen everybody to what I have to say. I'm gonna share with you how things work every day. What we'll talk about is one special thing. And once we learn, we all go, To the thinking rap. To the thinking rap. The thinking rap. Think, think, let's all think. Because when we are together, it's easier to think. I think I now know how a telephone works. Hmm. All voices and sounds make vibrations. The telephone changes these into electric patterns to go on the wires. Other phones make them into sounds again. Sound is a phenomenon of vibration. And the telephone uses this principle to convert the vibrations of your voice into electric signals that can travel over wire. A telephone actually has a small microphone in the speaking end of the handset and a tiny speaker in the earpiece. A phone call creates two circuits, microphone to speaker at each end. Many new refinements are being added. We already talk by satellite, and voices will travel on light waves. Now that's how a telephone works. Isn't that cool? But you know what? The telephone is just like prayer. And God, He's our greatest friend. Yep, our greatest friend. And to build that friendship to make it stronger and better, we need to always keep in touch. Yes, keep in touch. So we need to pick up the phone and talk to God. Yes, talk to God. Have you called Him today? Well, if not, you can always call Him anytime, anywhere. You can count on it. Because for sure, for sure, God is so excited to answer your call. Yes, He's excited to answer your call. So call Him and remember that He, that God, is your greatest friend. Alright? Okay. Well, that's all we have for today. Join me again next time as I show you another part of my house. Pow's house! Once again, I'm your Kuya Pow. And always remember, God is here. God is there. God is where? Everywhere. Bye! Take a look inside Pow's house. Take a look inside my house. Take a look inside Pow's house. And see God work in our our house
Guess who? Can you guess who our mystery character for the week is? He was thrown into a pit by his brothers and sold for 20 pieces of silver. There is enough water in the atmosphere that if it all fell as rain at the same time, it, it would cover the entire surface of the earth with 2.5 centimeters or one inch of the water. Time for another Bible Quiz! Bible Quiz! Who stood at the top of the ladder in Jacob's dream? Letter A a heavenly chorus of angels. Letter B, Saint Peter. Letter C, God. Letter D, the angel Gabriel. The correct answer is, letter C, God. Guess who? Can you guess who our mystery character for the week is? He interpreted Pharaoh's dream as foretelling that seven years of abundance would be followed by seven years of famine. Hey Bennett, it's your turn in Stories from the Big Book. Hmm, I better go out there. Ah, uh, Bennett, wrong way. Oopsies, I forgot. Stories from the Big Book Hey kids, sit back and relax because it's storytelling time. Whoa, I'm not in my chair. Looks like this is a new chair, the friendship chair. Uh, and so kids, grab your popcorn and your drink. I'll give you a few minutes. Na 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 Okay, are you ready? Yes, you are ready. You look ready to me. So kids, I'm going to tell you the story of Adam and Eve. Well, Adam was the very first man God created after all the animals on the sixth day. So when he made Adam, well, you know what's something ironic? That ironic thing is that Adam means man. And he's the first man, that's why Adam, man, Adam, man. Anyway, since Adam was made or created, he was very lonely. Even if God let him name all the animals, like he named one dog, named one cat, named one hawk, named one belly big toes, and named one Pikachu, and some Loch Ness Monster, and griffins, and bears, and dragons. Anyway, you see, he was still lonely, even if all the animals were tumbling him, crushing him, thunder shocking him, and the rest. He was still lonely. That's why God gave him some sleep pills. Just kidding. Made Adam go to sleep, and got the rib from Adam, shape-shifted it, and made another person. And it was a more feminine, a bit weaker, but more beautiful version of his first creation, man. And since he, and since the person came out from the rib, Adam decided to call him, or who became her, woman. And that woman was named Eve. And they lived happily ever after, in the Garden of Eden, in heaven. So kids, you know God lets us to have friends and He doesn't want us to be lonely. But He doesn't want us to have bad friends. Bad friends to have bad influence 
and if they give you bad influence, that's a factor to sinning. And it's like we're holding God's hand and whenever we sin, and by the factor of bad influence, it breaks off. And you're far away and lonely, just like how Adam was at the start of the story. That's why never be lonely and always make friends, don't be shy, and do what's best. Till next time, this is Ben Sanchez. Stories from the Big Bucks. Guess who? Can you guess who our mystery character for the week is? His brothers prostrated themselves before him and therein fulfilled, in part, his dreams. Got a guess already? Stick around for the answer and for more of Mustard TV. Did you know that not all rivers end up in the ocean? The rivers flowing south from the Tassili Mountains in North Africa slow down to a trickle and disappear into the dry Sahara Sands. Time for another Bible Quiz! Bible Quiz! How many people went out to collect bread on the seventh day? Letter A, all. Letter B, many. Letter C, some. Letter D, none. The correct answer is letter C, some. Guess who? Can you guess who our mystery character for the week is? Joseph the Dreamer. He is the eleventh son of Jacob. He was given a beautiful coat full of many colors by his father. He was thrown into a pit by his brothers and sold for 20 pieces of silver. He interpreted Pharaoh's dream as foretelling that seven years of abundance would be followed by seven years of famine. His brothers prostrated themselves before him and therein fulfilled in part his dreams. Mustardans, here's this week's saint. This week's saint! Hey kids, it's Ate Marie again. How are you doing this morning? Welcome to Mustard TV's This Week's Saint. Today, Mustardians, we will have a familiar face with us. Welcome to the show, Saint Cecilia. We know this lovely Roman noble woman to be the patron saint of music. She would sing to God in her heart, especially when she is praying for his help. She, by the way, was the wife of Roman's pagan nobleman, Valerian. On their wedding celebration, when she and her husband were alone, she said to him, I have a secret to tell you. You must know that I have an angel of God watching over me. If you let me keep my promise to be Christ's bride only, my angel will love you as he loves me. Valerian was surprised and said kindly, Show me this angel. If he comes from God, I will do as you wish. Cecilia said, If you believe in the one true God and receive the waters of baptism, then you will see my angel. Valerian went up to Bishop Urban and was received with joy. After he had professed his belief in the Christian religion, he was baptized and returned to St. Cecilia. There, by the saint's side, the young man saw the splendid angel. Valerian's brother, Tiburtius, learned of the Christian faith from Cecilia. She spoke so beautifully of Jesus that before long, he too was baptized. Together, the two brothers performed many works of charity. When they were arrested for being Christians, 
they went bravely to death rather than give up their new faith in Jesus. Saint Cecilia lovingly buried their bodies before she too was arrested. She converted the very officers who tried to make her sacrifice to false gods. When she was put into a fire, it did not harm her. At last, a man was sent to behead her. He struck her neck three times, but Cecilia did not die right away. She lay on the floor of her own home, unable to move. Yet, by holding out three fingers of one hand and one of the other, she lay on the floor of her own home, unable to move. Yet, by holding out three fingers of one hand and one of the other, she still professed her belief in the Blessed Trinity. We celebrate her feast day today. On this feast of the patroness of music, let us consider the words of St. Augustine. Words cannot express the things that are sung by the heart. And if so happy that words can no longer express what they feel, people discard the restricting syllables. They burst out into a simple sound of joy, of tribulation. That's Saint Cecilia, our patron saint of music. Have a great weekend, Mustardians. This is your Ate Marie once again, telling you to stick around for more Mustard TV. Spot the difference. Look for what's different in the two pictures. Tingnan yung mabuti. Oh, may nakita na ba kayo? Sige, hanap lang. seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. There are five different things in this picture. Did you see them? Number one, the word crush and the word rush. Number two, the turtle's tongue. Number three, the elephant's bed. Number four, the deer's horn. And number five, the yellow monkey's eyes. Did you see them all? Guardians, we finally reached the end of our show. It's now time to say goodbye. And we also hope that you enjoyed your popcorn. Anyway, you must be wondering, why am I wearing this invisible t-shirt? Well, that's because we have this invisible friend. And we know he created the world and the whole universe. Everything, even you. And that's because his name is G-O-D. That's God. God, He's been always holding our hand. And when we sin, it's like you go away. And you become lonely. And you have it's like you don't have any friends, you know? It's like no friends, zero. You're very lonely. It's like you're lying down in the house, bored, dumbfounded, or something like that. That's why always try to hold God's hand and try to stop doing bad things and you will never be lonely again, trust me. And you know kids, always make friends with people, but make sure you get good friends. Well, because if you get bad friends, you'll get bad influence, and 
boom, hand broken. Till next time, this is Benny Sanchez wearing the invisible shirt. And this is Francisca Soiko. And you have been watching Master TV. Where we so see the fun. And Faith, God bless you. Bye. Na 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 na.